So sometimes all we have time is to say, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How many of you ever been caught in a snare like that? Hallelujah. Amen. My God. I was caught in the snare. And I'm going to tell you the whole story. I won't bother you with that. But I was caught in the snare where I just prayed and prayed and prayed to the Lord. To finally I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, it's me again. You know, the yeah, same old one. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I, I came before you last night and, and this morning and all that. But then, uh, and I'm back again. I didn't even wait till the day you by. I'm back again. And I have a prayer. And I need an answer. And I said, Lord, I don't know, I don't know where they come from, but I just got so many problems. I got a problem that I cannot solve. I've never been without a problem. I never. I made myself comfortable because God always intervened in time. He said, Lord, I, I don't mean to bother you. I don't want to bother you, Lord. But I got something I got to do. And I need your help to go through. It's me again, Lord. Amen. They want to sing now. I'll turn that. Amen. It's me again, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone. Welcome to our teleconference. Song was saying it, he was there just in time to rescue me. He was there just in time. Our God that we serve is an on time God. He is never late, He's always on time. So thank God for our on-time God, a God that we can depend on in all circumstances, in every situation. It's just, it's just great and wonderful to know that you know we have such a God who sits high and looks low and um, loves us with such a great love that His love is immeasurable. His love for us cannot be measured. So we thank the Lord for His love, His mercy, His goodness, His grace, and all the good things that He has done for us. He is a great God. So we want to just thank Him for another day. We are alive and we are well. And I think that's a great, wonderful thing to be alive and to be well and to be, able to be in our right mind, you know, and, you know, having things convenient. God is good, and He is worthy of our praises. So I want to give Him praise. I want to give Him glory. I want to lift Him up. I want to exalt His name. I want to sing praises unto Him. I want to, you know, sing and shout and just be joyful in the Lord. And we need to be joyful in the Lord because our Lord has gotten us the victory. The victory we have, we are victorious because of this man, Jesus. So, God bless you. We're going to go into the world. I'm going to start with a short prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship. We glorify you. We thank you for another day. Psalmist says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And we are rejoicing and we are glad. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for what you are doing for us. And thank you for what you are yet to do for us. Bless us and keep us. Guide and protect us. And give us the victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And go before us, Lord, and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessings. Blessings of the Lord be upon you who has joined us tonight in this teleconference. And um, I'm thinking uh, a word the Lord has put on my heart to think about, you know, the reality and the, the reality of life. You know, sometimes we're going on from day to day and we don't think about the reality of life. And the, the reality of life is that we are here and we are sojourners. The, the reality of life is that this is not our home. The reality of life is that this is not our permanent dwelling place. And so sometimes we go going on and everything seems to be so nice and beautiful and you know everything is going well and you know we are happy and we're joyful and we have 
all the things that life can we wish for and everything's convenient and we just continue to glorify and many people to today just continue to live in not thinking about their beginning and their end and this is what I want to talk about today is the beginning and the end because that's how life is this life that's how this life is it's not the way that life really is it's the way that this life that we are living is it's a number life it's a time that um we start and we finish and we don't go on forever and uh, as i said a lot of people don't really think about this they don't think about it it's far from their mind thinking and their conception and they don't some people don't even want to think about it but it's a reality we were born and we will die we we live and we die like everything else everything else in nature every animal in nature you know even trees and everything the fish in the sea everything has a time and uh, just want to look at this psalm psalm 90 psalm 90 i would like to just look at this psalm and this is just it's called it's it's it's, it's a reality check it is a reality check um, and sometimes we should have a reality check. It's Psalm 90 is a Psalm of Moses. A Psalm of Moses. Psalm 90. And this is what the man of God Moses wrote in Psalm 90. He says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, even thou hast formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and say it, return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are as yesterday, when it is past. And as a watch in the night. Hallelujah. Verse 5 said, Thou carry, us, carry them away with the flood, and they are asleep. In the morning they are like grass and grow it up. In the morning they flourish it and grow it up. In the evening it is cut down and withered, wither it. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sin is in the light of thy countenance for all our days are passed away in thy wrath we spend our years as a tale that is told the days of our years are three score and ten, and by reason of strength they become they are four score years. Yet is thy strength and labor, for it is soon cut down and fly away. We know the power of thine anger. Who know? Who know it? The power of thine anger. Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. And verse, the last verse says, So teach us, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. Praise God. Praise God. So this is a psalm of David when he's reminiscing and thinking. And you know, sometimes... We have to think we have to think deep. We can't think too shallow. We have to think deep. What is this life that we have to live? What is what is the meaning of it? What is the purpose of life? Is it just to achieve academically whatever we can achieve? It is to get diploma, is it to get you know, to achieve whatever fame, fortune, whatever you know, our we, we, we seek after, the world seek after, fame, fortune, wealth, and things like that. 
academically, whatever they can achieve? Is that the most important thing? I say no. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So the most prominent things in our heart and in our mind is to make sure that we understand and we know God and that we have such a thing as a relationship with Him. That we, ha that we can communicate with Him and that He can communicate with us. That is the most important thing in life. But many people put it off on the back burner. Not important, not essential, but it is essential. And Moses, the servant of God, who is said to be the meekest man who ever walked on the face of this earth, was Moses. And he's looking into himself. And he's looking into his past and into his future. And he's saying in verse 1, he said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generation. Lord, thou hast been keeping us. Lord, thou hast been maintaining us. Lord, thou hast been providing for us. Lord, thou hast been our, our keeper through all generations. And he went on to say, before the mountains were brought forth, before the mountains were created, before the earth was formed, before there was a life on earth, before there was a earth, before there was sea, before there was dry land, before there was a sun and a moon and the stars, before everything, he says, even from everlasting, everlasting, everything on this earth has a beginning. And everything in, on this earth will have an end. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That doesn't change God from being God. If this world is consumed, if this world be destroyed, God will still be God. Because he's God from everlasting to everlasting. That means that God is not of this earth. God is not equivalent to this earth. Its earth is not equivalent to God. This world cannot contain God. From everlasting. Everything to do with this earth related to time. He says, going on, he says, Thou turnest man to destruction. And says, return ye children of men. From everlasting, from God created man. Man has turned away from God. And God is always saying, return unto me. As he said in Malachi, return unto me and I will return unto you. It is a two-way strip. Return unto me. God is ever saying, return unto me. Come unto me. Come back to me. I created you. You have wandered away. You have gone astray. Return unto me, ye children of men. Because I created you. I made you for my glory. I made you for my praise. Return, ye children of men. And how great it is. And Psalm, in verse 4, he says, For a thousand years in thy sight. A thousand years in the sight of God are but as yesterday when it is past. How great! So one thousand years to us is equivalent to God just as yesterday. Just as, as it says, when it is past. So, the, the measure of the years of God cannot be measured. His years, his time cannot be measured. He is from everlasting. He, 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 you see, the thing is, for us, it's very hard for us to comprehend something that we are, is not in our nature. Eternity is not in our physical nature. We can't understand eternity in a physical sense. We cannot understand eternity in a, in a mortal sense because eternity is not mortal. Mortal cannot be eternal. Mortal is mortal, eternal, eternal. Terrestrial and celestial. Terrestrial is of the earth, celestial is of the heaven. They cannot be combined together. 
They are separate entities. A thousand years in thy sight is but as yesterday when it is past, as the watch of the night. Thou carriest them away with a flood, and they sleep. How many years have gone? How many thousands of years have gone since God created man? And yet to us it's a long time, but to God it's a watch in the night, because God dwelleth in eternity. His nature is eternal. And the wonderful thing is that we being of the flesh and of the mortal, we have that access to God's eternal plan. We have entrance into the eternal plan of God. We have an entrance into life because of what Jesus did. He, was, he went to the cross to give us access to eternal life. And what, 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 what can be greater for us? What greater prize can we have but to have eternal life? What can, what can, what can um, supplement or what can you know, take as an alternative that can be satisfy that eternal life? Thou carriest them away like a flood. In the morning they are like grass that grow it up. And I think about these words sometimes. I meditate on these words. In the morning, men are all like grass. The beauty and all the strength and all the praise and all what is good, what, what, what men look upon. In the morning, Man is like grass. God said to Isaiah in one, in one scripture says, Son of man, cry. Isaiah said to God, What shall I cry? God says, All flesh, all flesh is like grass. So the reality check is that we realize that we are here on this earth for a season. One day, Jesus is coming back to take his his treasure. We are his treasure. One day, Jesus is coming back for his own. For people who love him, for people who serve him, for people who give him the praise and the glory and the honor that is due. Jesus is coming back for his people, for his church. And so we have to be mindful, regardless of what is going on around us, the cares of life. And when we think about what's going on, there's so much cares of life, so much things to be concerned about. We look to the right, we look to the left, there's always things to keep our mind occupied. And not only keep our mind occupied, but keep our mind away from giving God the praise, giving God the glory. In the morning they are like grass, they grow it up. In the, in the morning they grow it up. In the evening they are cut down. Who can maintain himself? Which man can maintain himself? We may be able to go on for a while, but sooner or later we will be falling apart like anything else. This is our nature. This is the nature of the earth and all that dwelleth thereof. In the morning is flesh, fresh, flourish it, and grow it up. In the evening it is cut down and wither it, wither it, wither it away. Then he went on to say, For we are consumed with thine anger, and thy wrath are we troubled. We are consumed with the anger of God. When we think about, you know, even the earthquake recently that happened in Turkey and how many people who the building was just falling down like dominoes, like tumbling cars are just falling down in some parts of Turkey and Syria. And when we think about that, we are consumed in many times. Sometimes there's flooding in certain areas. Sometimes there's hurricane, typhoon, and all sorts of um, things happening. The earth, the earth, the nature is angry. We are consumed with the anger. With thine anger, we are, and by thy wrath are we troubled. 
Imagine how many people lost their life just like that in that last um, hurricane, um, uh, the, um, the, the earthquake um, that happened in Turkey. We are consumed with that anger because we turn away from the living God who created us to serve Him. That is the reason we were created to serve Him and we are not doing what we were created for. Thou has set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We, uh, we spent our years as a tale that is told. Our days are passed away in thy wrath. Our days are passed away because we do not serve the living God. Our days are passed away because we think of other things more important than the God who created us, who made us in his likeness, who gave us life, life and gave us all things. Because he gave this world to man. He created man and he gave man us, he gave us dominion over the world, over the earth, over the fowls of the ears, over the fish of the sea, over everything that creepeth upon the earth. We gave us that and we turn away from the living God. All our days are passed with, are passed with thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. He went on to say, Psalm 90 verse 10, The days of our years are threescore and ten. By reason of strength, they be fourscore years. So, as I began to say, numbers, the days, our days are numbers. Whether we like to face it or not, it is a fact. The days of our years are are three score and ten, which is seventy years. And by reason of strength, if we are strong enough and we look after ourselves and we care for our bodies, we may reason by live four score, which is eighty years. Anything above that is bonus. Praise God. The years of our life, the years of the days of our years are three score years and ten. By reason of strength it may be four score years. Yet in their strength, labor and sorrow, it is soon cut off and we fly away. Hallelujah. I will fly away. Children of God, people of God, we will fly away. One day if we serve God, if we love God, if we give God the thanks and the praise and serve Him in spirit and in truth, soon we will be cut off and we will fly away. It is soon cut off and we'll fly away to a better life, to a life which is promised us to the life which he shed his blood to give us, to pay for us, redemption. We will be soon, all that we see and all that we take for granted, all that we look up to, all that we, we put our attention into, will be cut off. All the beauty that we imagine from our mental, from our physical sense, it will be soon cut off. And we fly away. So I went on to say verse 11. Who know the power of thine anger? According to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. Moses said to God, teach us. Teach us to number our days. Teach us 
to be mindful of the fact that one day we have to stand before a, a great king. We have to stand before the king. Teach us to remember that one day we will stand before the judge, the judge of all judges. Teach us to be mindful of the day that we will stand before the Lord. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, teach us. Because if you teach us to number our days, then we will apply our hearts unto wisdom. And wisdom is a principal thing. We need to have wisdom in life. Wisdom cometh from God. Wisdom and um, I'm looking at Psalm, Psalm, Psalm chapter 2, verse 10. Psalm chapter 2, verse 10, it says, Be wise now, be wise now, O ye kings, and be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Be wise now, O ye kings. All the kings of the earth need to be wise. Wisdom the fear of God, remember the Bible says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Be wise, now therefore ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice in trembling. So everyone that rule it, the king, the prime minister, the president, and all those people who rule over the populace need wisdom. And wisdom comes with the acknowledgement and the fear of God. Be wise now, therefore, he kings, and be instructed, he judges of the world, even the judges. Because the judges themselves will stand before the judge. Many judges of the world, and if they judge unrighteously, they will face the judgment of God because at the end of the day, God is the supreme judge of the earth. Regardless of what is going on, God, Jesus, is the supreme judge of the earth. And one thing is good and we're glad to know, he is a righteous judge. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a righteous judge. Be wise now, therefore, ye kings. Be instructed, ye judge of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. Rejoice in trembling. Imagine that. You serve the Lord. But you know, because God is so awesome. God is so awesome, powerful. His anger. His fear. His love. All the goodness. He is so awesome. Serve the Lord with fear, rejoice in trembling. And going down in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. I'm going to read a few verses from Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, get wisdom, get wisdom, get understanding. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, for she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Get wisdom. Wisdom, as I say, come from God. Wisdom don't come from learning, um, going to school, going to college, going to university. That's not wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. And in all our learning, whatever we learn in this world, whatever we are taught by our tutors, our teachers, that is not wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. So with all our getting, our get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Forget it not, forsake it not, incline, neither incline from the words of my mouth. So when we open our hearts to wisdom, God will give us wisdom. God will give us understanding. 
And so there's, if anything we don't, we are not sure of, the wisdom of God will reveal it to us because it's coming from God. Forsake her not. Forsake not wisdom. And you know, one of the things about wisdom, wisdom is accepting the word of God. Wisdom is absorbing the word of God when it comes to us. Wisdom is not disputing God's word. Wisdom is receiving the word of God joyfully. Forsake her not. Forsake not wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Wisdom shall preserve us from life into eternal life. That is what wisdom do. What can be greater? Love her. Love wisdom. And she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. That It goes back to what I'm saying. That all our learning and all we try to achieve in this world. It is not that principal thing. The principal thing is wisdom. Wisdom is opening our hearts to the word of God. Accepting the word of God. Obeying. Receiving it joyfully. Not disputing, but receiving. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Because wisdom and understanding works together. When we have wisdom, the God give us understanding. That is receiving God's word. That is accepting God's word. That is giving praise and glory to God. Wisdom is the principal thing. Principle is the most important thing. And Moses says, teach me. We, know, we need to be taught. We don't, it just don't come like that. We need to be thought, taught. You know, and he says, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. And then we have to, then we realize that we are not our own. When, when wisdom comes, wisdom teaches that we are not our own. Wisdom teaches that we are sustained by God. And we, we do not sustain ourselves. And if we do not sustain ourselves, then we are not our own. We belong to somebody. We belong to God. We are children of God. We did not make ourselves. We were created. And the reason for our creation is to give God praise. That's why we were created. And if we lose sight of the, our purpose in creation, then we are losing sight of the whole picture. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. God give wisdom freely. It is like the great big ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. It is flowing over more than you can, we can receive. God give us wisdom freely. We only have to open our hearts to him. And it will flood us with wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. When we get wisdom, we say like Moses, Lord, Lord, teach us. Teach us to, num to number our days. Teach us to understand what we are. Teach us to understand our purpose in life. Teach us that we may be pleasing in thy sight. Teach us. Because wisdom is the principal thing. I'm going on to Romans chapter 10. And I'll read a few verses from Romans chapter 10. And from verse 11. Romans chapter 10 from verse 11 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Whosoever believe on him, whosoever believe on who, whosoever believe on Jesus, 
shall not be ashamed. If we want to live a life, a shameless life, from beginning to end, we need to believe on Jesus. He went on to say, There is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. The same Lord is rich unto all that call upon him. Every man is a man before God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish. The same Lord is Lord over all. He's over Lord of the Jews and the Greek and whatever they may be able to call whatever religion or creed or color nations. He's the one Lord. From north to south, east to west, it's the same Lord. One Lord. The same Lord is Lord over all and is rich. Rich. Talk about the riches of the Lord. How rich is thou, Lord? How rich is he? He is rich. He's rich in love. He's rich in truth. He's rich in righteousness. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in wisdom, understanding. He's rich. We, tell, we see people who are millionaires and billionaires. That has nothing to do with the richness of God. He is rich in everything. Abundant. Abundant of riches. The same Lord is rich over all that call upon him. That means everyone that call upon Jesus. He's really ready, willing and able to save everyone. For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? If someone don't believe in God, they can't call upon him. If, if anyone do not believe in the Lord Jesus, they cannot call upon him. The unbelief become a barrier. And that barrier cannot be penetrated. You can call, one can only call upon him whom they believe. And it says, how shall they believe on him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring it glad tidings and great things. Praise the name of the Lord. It is, it is good when we lift up Jesus. It is good when we praise the Lord. It is good when we worship the Lord. It is good when we give glory and praise to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. They are altogether lovely. And we thank God for him. We thank God for his goodness and his mercies and his grace. We thank God for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God richly bless you, my brethren. Thank you for joining us in this um, teleconference. Um, I'm going to ask um, Sister Rose to pray in a week while, and then I'm going to call. I'm going to call them Brother Praveen um, to just give a little short testimony. Then I, I'm going to ask Sister Rose to pray a prayer request uh, that has been in our chat. Um, Brother Praveen. Brother Praveen, are you there? Okay. 
is away from his mic. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to Sister Rose. You there? Greetings. Greetings. There's a prayer request. I'm going to ask you to pray. There's a prayer request in the ch in the chat line. I'm going to read it out and then ask you to pray. Okay, for the family. All right. Okay, I'm going to read it. It says, um, it's from PT, one of our listeners, who's always with us. He says, I'm putting a prayer request today for my mother as she has been rather poorly for the well, rather poorly and she was called home on Thursday and is with her maker. She was firm believer and a godly example to all. She leaves ten children and over 60 grandchildren, including great-grandchildren. She lived to see them, see them alive well, and we are grateful to have her with us so long, 93 years. Please pray for the family. So there's a prayer request, um, Sister Rose, I would like you to attend to. Um, my deepest condolence to P.T. and her family for the loss of her mother. And we pray that God give you strength. I know you're always signing in. So we thank God for you because you're always on our teleconference. And it's, I'm sad, sad to know that you're, you've lost your mother, but she's gone to a better home. And um, may God rest her soul rest in the bosom of Jesus. So Sister Rose, I'm going to call you to just pray for our PT family and um, that God give them strength in these times of bereavement. Sister Rose. Okay, greetings. Greetings. And that's what we're going to to um, PT and your family. You know, I can imagine what this is like, and I just wonder that she you kept her for uh, the 93 years that she was here, and ensure that she is now in the arms of the Lord Amen. and peace with, with our Maker. God bless you. Amen. For you, I am praying. Amen. For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying, I am praying for you, for you, I am praying for you, I am praying for you. I am praying, I am praying for you one more time, for you, I am praying for you, I am praying for you. I am praying, I am praying for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, Amen. to you, Lord, I am praying. I'm praying for your daughter, Amen. Lord, P.T. and her family who lost their beautiful mother. Lord, tears are a language that you understand. Yes. And your understand is to infinity. So, Lord, at this time when they're going through the loss of a mother, of maybe a grandmother, of a sister, of an auntie, of a friend. Lord, I pray that you comfort them and wipe the tears from their arms and let them know that you are with them, Lord. I pray when they feel that sadness in the morning, I pray that you will be with them, Lord. Mm. You just said in your word, if there's no one else with us, you'll always be there. So I pray, Lord, as your daughter is going through the loss of her mother, mm. Lord, that was with them. Lord, I can imagine that she's missing her now. But Lord, I pray that you bring back those those beautiful memories yes. of when they were together. Lord. And Lord, I pray in the midnight hour, when there was no one there, when there was no friend, when there was no one there, no even a pastor, whosoever there be, Lord, I pray that you will be there in the midst, Lord, mm. to comfort them, Lord, yes. to, to be with them, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, in time, Lord, I know, Lord, 
that the pain and the loss that they're feeling, that it will be a bit less. Yes, they will always miss their mother. Just like when I lost my daughter, I will always miss her. But Lord, I know, Lord, that your comforted arms will surround them. So Lord, I pray, give them that peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. I pray that you comfort them, Lord, in the morning. I pray that you comfort them in the evening. I pray that as the days unfold, Lord, and they go in through preparations for the burial, I pray that you'll be there in the midst. Mm. And I pray that you'll have a beautiful send-off, the best send-off that they would ever want to have, yes. Lord. Lord, I pray just continue to bring the family together. They'll all come together to, com to comfort one another, yes. Lord. Lord, I can imagine what your daughter's feeling, but I pray, Lord, that you comfort her from the crown of her head Hallelujah. to the soles of her feet. Praise the Lord. And to surround her day and night, Lord, that she will have that perfect peace and that trust in you, because you are there 365 days of the year. Yes. When someone might not be there, a friend might not be there. The brethren might not be there, but you are there. So, Lord, I pray that you be with her. And we will continue to pray for her as well, Lord. So, Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I give you the honor that is due unto your name through Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Rose. Thank you for the prayer. And I um, just want to console the family that um, our prayers will be with them, you know, during these time trying times you know and god is able to comfort you you know and thank god for the years that she has been you know been keep been with you and you know the bible says the years of a man is three three scores and ten which is 70 and she's lived far below, above 70 so god is good we give god thanks for her life and um pray that the family will be comforted Amen. We'll keep on praying for them. We'll keep on praying for yes, them. Yes, we will like continue them. to pray for it's them. We, yes, we will continue. Our prayers and our thoughts are with you, Sister PT, and your family. Amen. You're not alone. We, we care about you and we love you as well. Yes, we love you. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Rose. Brother Delian, you're there. Brother Delian, God bless you. Came on. Hope everything is all right, my brother. Greet everyone if you want, and then we can close. God bless you. Okay, well, I'm going to close with another prayer, praying for everyone that God bless us all and keep us on the shadow of his wings. Praise God. Father, I thank you for everyone who's joined us. Pray you be with us, pray you bless us, pray you keep us, preserve us according to the day of thy coming. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor that's due unto your holy name. We pray for the bereaved family as well, as Sister Rose has prayed, but Lord Jesus, bless them and keep them. Thank you for your love, thank you for your mercies, thank you for your grace. We give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. I pray you all have a wonderful week. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, bless you and have a great week. And may the Lord be with you and keep you until his coming. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 